Oh, that's the one. Which one do? See how that's the one. You can see the whole room. Hello, can you hear me? This is Odessa. Yes, happy Mother's Day, Mama. Thank you. Same to you. <laughs> okay, we got about a minute. Oh, it's 11 o'clock, so we, we don't have a lot of time. I'm going to get started real quick. We got uh, people coming in, so I'm going to admit well, them. At your legs, Denise. I mean, three teachers. Davis. So far, I'm going to end the poll so you guys can see what That's the cold. results were. What's the day how come the results didn't, um, okay, here are the results. Uh, the quarantine has caused me to appreciate the number one thing was my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> number two <laughs> was my church. Number three was my home. Mm -hmm. So Matt, thank you for participating in the poll. It got an opportunity for you to give us an idea of what you appreciate about your life okay all righty so we got two people in the waiting room i'm gonna start out real quick just by going over oh let me say admit all um just by going over a quick part of the lesson um this we've been talking for the last few months about profits and so I want to welcome everybody for coming and just tell you that we're going to be talking more about profits today. Um, we're going to go back and do kind of a summarization. So our class agenda um, looks like this. Welcome, opening prayer by our own Deacon Webster. Uh, I'll go over the life, the lesson background, the people, places, and times. And then we're going to have a focus discussion. We're going to turn everything over to Deacon Webster at this time, and he'll give it back to me in a second. Deacon. No, you can it. Unmute it. Okay. Hey, man, I'm just glad to be here this morning. I'd like to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, and I hope everybody having a blessed day. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Dear God, our Father, we come this morning just to tell you that we thank you. We thank you for being so kind and so merciful and allowing us to see another day that's become a new creation. Lord, we ask that you bless this Sunday school lesson. We ask that something may be said that may help someone along the way. And somebody might want to become to be saved, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you bless our pastor in a special manner and bless his family, Lord. You know what we need, God, and I know how to ask you for it. Please uh, look and have mercy. And then, Father, when life journey is all over, and we, like others, must come to the end of the way, take it to thee what our praise shall be thine, these and all other blessings acts in your son Jesus' name. For his sake we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Um, we, again, I like how Pat did the volunteers requesting that folks volunteer. Well, I put that same slide up, um, but I put the wrong... <laughs> I put the wrong passage here, but uh, please be mindful if you can just sign up to um, participate and volunteer in a um, uh, reading the scripture if, ne if needed, okay? You can just put your name in the chat box. I know I talk real fast, so I'm going to go fast, and I want at least three people. I want somebody to tell all of us because Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Webster are the actual instructors. I'm just going over the lesson background and we're on a tight timetable. So if I can have one volunteer, let me know when it's 1120. Another lot a volunteer, let me know when it's 1140. And then uh, I'll wrap it up <laughs> at 1145. Um, Writing of Zechariah, Zechariah is a prophet, and I'm not gonna even go over this slide. I have a better slide, but I wanted to share what, um, and we're gonna read this, um, this information. I don't know if you realize, we've been talking about prophets for a while, but we never really go into what was going on during that time. And one of the things I thought should be highlighted is that, the Northern Kingdom was conquered by a country called Assyria. 
And that's when we got the lost tribes. There were 10 of them. They were considered the Northern Kingdom. So that was the first thing that happened. And then the next thing that happened was the Southern Kingdom gets conquered by Babylon. And so you only had two tribes remaining. And so that is a big important part because that's where a lot of you remember Daniel writing and some other things going on. So I gotta let some people in, <laughs> they keep coming in. And so the next thing that happens is Babylon is conquered by Persia. And I don't know if you remember when Denise was reading the story of Esther and how she married the king. Well, that was Persia. So that was uh, during the time when they were letting the Jews, Jews return back to, uh, where is, oh, somebody said something. That's why I can't see. Y'all going too many things happen. <laughs> so, uh, the next thing was Persia is conquered by Greece. And that's where you find out, I don't know if you remember Alexander the Great, but he was conquering, but that was during the time where God really was not having anything written. There, were, there was nobody that was actually, nothing was going on uh, in, in, in heaven to us. He wasn't sending any prophets or anything to talk to us during that time. And then finally, just before Jesus was born, Greece is conquered by Rome. Now there was another conquering, but it was so short. Uh, Greece is conquered by Rome, and that's when the Roman government comes up. That's when we learn about Caesar. So I just wanted to give those points of highlights so you can get an idea. When we're reading about kings, uh, First Kings, Second Kings, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, those are all the kings at that time, but they, they, these prophets are spanning during those books. Uh, now, I wanted to give you a video so that you can get an idea of how um, things were happening. I'm not going to talk. I'm talking fast, so let me let you start this video for you. <clears throat> let me know if you can't hear it. We've been uh, studying the prophets this unit. Some of them, you know, are just conquered and assimilate into territory. So that's what happens with the people of the northern kingdom. So remember, Solomon is king. Israel is united. Solomon's sons, after he dies, split the kingdom in two. Northern kingdom is called Israel. There's 10 tribes there. Southern kingdom is called Judah. There's two tribes there. And this happens because of Solomon's disobedience. He worships mm -hmm. idols of his concubines and all of his wives and of his heart strays from the Lord when he has why his kingdom is divided. Exactly. And then when his sons want territory, they end up splitting the kingdom, right? Jeroboam and Rehoboam. And so then after a few hundred years, if you can imagine, Assyria, which is a kingdom up in the north, which would be in modern day Syria, comes down and conquers Israel because they're right on the border with each other. When that happens, a lot of those still, again, disobedient people, people who aren't worshiping God, you know, staying faithful to the covenant, just assimilate into Assyrian society. They become known as the lost tribes of Israel, and they're never thought of as Israel in the grand sense again. Because they live like the people who conquered them. Exactly. So they start worshiping foreign gods. They're, you know, living their lives like they're Assyrian citizens. They exactly. assimilate, yeah. in other words. In the meanwhile, Judah and Benjamin survived that conquest, right? They survived Assyria, but then they get conquered by Babylon over 100 years later. When they get conquered, there are people who are left in Judah, right? They're normally poor people, and they are a remnant. But then there are also people who go into Babylonian captivity who keep trying to worship God. They remember to stay faithful to the covenant, and they're also a remnant. And so Zechariah is prophesying to those people who came back from Babylonian exile and still were trying to be faithful to the Lord, the remnant of Judah, which in a bigger sense is the remnant of Israel. Okay. So I, just to go from there, what I did was draft up a, a, a little survey, a summary sheet of everything that was going on. When he talked about the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom, I put those here. I could annotate this, but I don't want to mark it up. So the Northern Kingdom 
was the that was the one that was taken over by Assyria, and that was about uh, like 700 years before Christ even came, and then the uh, about 150 years later, the Southern Kingdom is taken over, and that occurs about 600 years before Christ comes. And I don't know, you see this word, I was telling somebody today, when you see BC, a lot of times they say that's, called, that's uh, before Christ. We know it as that, but it actually means before the common era. So we mm -hmm. divide numbers between before the common era and after uh, the common era, but they call it AD, uh, Anna Dama, Domini. So I don't want to go too much because I can be. But here we see where um, Zechariah writes his book around 518 BC, 500 years before Christ comes. But that also is about 118 years before the silence comes. And so we're going to be looking at Zechariah and things are occurring with him after they've been conquered and when they've been uh they've come back from where they were in babylon the persian king has let them go all right so zachariah is right in this section here right in here all righty so that's my slide i do have one other slide i'm not going to go over that because i don't want to take over all of the time from um Bonnie, I'm sorry, I'm looking, Bonnie is coming in <laughs> from Vicki and Ruben because I'm multitasking and it's starting to pick up now. So I got to turn it over so I won't get confused. All righty. Um, this is the video of the in focus discussion. Okay. Is that right? No, that's not. What is this? No, I needed to tell you one more thing. This in the scripture that today we're going to hear about the word zion and zion has a specific meaning and i wanted to go over and let you hear what that is and they do a great job of explaining it so bear with me let me know if you can't hear Uh, Zion. So this comes up in the scripture lesson itself, and uh, it comes from actually a mountain that Jerusalem is built on. So uh, by the time of Jesus, and even in this time when um, Jews are returning back from Babylon, there is this idea that they need to get back to Zion. So Rome was built on seven hills, right? This is legend about Rome. Well, Jerusalem also happens to be built on seven hills. And so one of those mountains is Mount Zion. And then there's, of course, the Mount of Olives and Mount Priochus and, Pre Pre and um, you know, Mount Moriah. Like these are all mountains that you've heard of in scripture. Jerusalem is built on seven of those. And so Mount Zion would have actually been um, not where the temple is, that's closer to Mount Moriah, but Mount Zion is the place where people probably would have lived. And so the idea is still in the minds of the Jews returning back from Babylon. They need to get back to Jerusalem, the holy mountain, to Mount Zion, where they can live and dwell God's presence is there. So that's uh, what, what Zion is all about. Okay. And so I, he, he kind of messed up some of the words. <laughs> so I put them down. These are the seven hills that are in um, Jerusalem and Mount Zion, number five and six, they have an original Mount Zion and a new Mount Zion. So I just wanted to share that. Now I'm officially turning it over to Deacon. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. I was going for. Can they hear us? Okay. Yeah, they can. So, so good morning. Can you guys hear us? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, I'm going to read the aim for change for our lesson. By the, by the end of the lesson, we will comprehend the impact of God's presence in a community, yearn for God's perpetual presence and the promise of justice it brings, and pray for God's presence to result in a communal sense of justice, prosperity, and unity. 
our um, in focus story. Uh, Arlita, did you have a video for the in focus story? Yes, I do. Here it is. All right. Let's share it. Let me let somebody in. Okay. Christine and Michael walked slowly through the immense destruction of their house. They were searching and hoping to find some photos of their children and Michael's wedding ring. He had just taken the ring off to work on their car when the tornado siren sounded. Michael's only thought was to run to the house to gather his children and wife. They met as he bounded up the steps of the porch. They went to the special room he had just completed for a storm like this. He never thought they would really use it, or at least not this soon. After two minutes that felt like forever, the wind ceased. Michael slowly opened the door and walked cautiously up the steps. The darkness was replaced with bright sunshine. As his eyes adjusted, he had seen utter destruction. In the midst of this chaos and calamity, how would they ever find his wedding ring or the pictures? Michael decided he and Christine should stop and pray. As they prayed, others joined them. After the prayer, they walked and found the family photo of all the children and themselves. They smiled and hugged each other. Even if they did not find the ring, the picture was a reminder of how God had shown mercy and blessed them in many ways. Do you pray and trust God right away, or do you turn to God later? What are ways God blesses people even when all hope is lost? That's it. Okay. Thank you, Arlita. So, um, at the in focus story, there was a tornado, and of course, they're looking through the r rubbish to look for photos and a wedding ring. And it asks, what would you look for in a devastating storm or situation? So I thought about, you know, when I see on the news and there have been tornadoes and what you're looking for, um, what would you miss? It definitely would be pictures and photos, especially those because now we have things where we have photos stored on the disc and all that, but we didn't have that back when my wedding pictures were done. So... Mm -hmm. <laughs> So it would be those baby pictures of our children as they're growing up and the family and, and wedding photos would be something, those things uh, that would be precious to me. Furniture can be replaced, clothes can be replaced, but those things like the photos that I would be looking for that. First of all, I would be praising God that I'm alive. That's the first thing that I'd be thankful for, for me and my family. That's the first thing. But when as far as physical looking for possessions that would that would be uh, something I would look for uh, anybody else have any input about what they would be looking for what would be precious to them pictures definitely uh, sound like somebody might be trying to say something but it's a lot of background noise that was Lillian she said pictures definitely oh okay all right yeah, I think that would probably be for most of us, are our pictures. Those are the memories that you just can't get back again. Um, let, we're going to keep it going because of the time. Keep in mind, scripture is so again, have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Fear ye not. And that's from Zechariah 8 and 15. And so now my husband is going to go ahead and get us started with the actual lesson. Amen. Uh, Alita, if you could pull up 8, 1, and 2 for me, please, of Zechariah. Yeah. And if I can get someone to read that for me. And I, and I didn't put, nobody volunteered in Okay, here. I'll read it. It said, then another message came to me from the Lord of heaven armies. This is what the Lord of, this is, this is what the Lord of heaven army says. It says, my love for Mount Zion is passionate and strong. I am consumed with passion for Jerusalem. Now, what they were saying, uh, I want to read it from the new translation. It just seemed like it made more sense to me, even though it's saying the same thing. It said, then another message came to me from the Lord 
of heaven's army. He said, this is what the Lord of heaven's army says. My love for Mount Zion is passionate and strong. I am consumed with passion for Jerusalem. What are you saying is that I, I love Jerusalem, you know, but I, I had to punish the people for what they had done earlier. Because Ruben, because Ruben. I, Yes, you're, you're moving away from the mic and you're turning your head away, so we're hearing oh. you. Okay, that's better. Oh. All right, can you see me? And yeah, we yeah. Okay, and I I started thinking about this. You know uh, what this was saying? It says about then it says the Lord came in the lesson from me to the Lord of heaven's armies. You know the Lord has some some armies in heaven that uh you know and they had to do what they had to do. Let me go back over here because it says, and that's people, places, and time. It, don't you have a video of that piece, people, places, and time, Marlita? Uh, I played that right? already, though. Oh, you played that already? Yeah, I played that already. Well, let, let's just go about this. We're looking at Zachariah. It says, one of the 12 minor prophets who collected work concluded the Old Testament. You moved away again, so we can't hear you. <laughs> Put that book in front of you. Okay, okay. <laughs> and it says that. What's that? I read it for you, Reuben. Thank you. One of the 12 minor prophets whose collective work concludes the Old Testament, Zechariah, wanted to motivate the Jews to rebuild the temple after their return from exile in Babylonia, but he used a different approach from that of his contemporary Haggai. Prophesying between August and December of 520 BC, Haggai promised the Jews an end to their crop failures and economic misery, giving God's message that, from this day will I bless you. Zechariah prophesying from 520 BC to perhaps 480 BC promised them a Messiah and a return to the glorious days of King David. Okay, thank you, Denise, for that. Now we, we're going to go right into the in depth. We're going right into in depth. God is jealous for Judith. And I'm going to have my wife to read that. Zechariah ministered among okay. the church. Get closer it, to that mic. All right. Zechariah, can you hear me now? Ministered yeah, much better. among a discouraged and indifferent community of people who had returned from Babylon to a city they call home, but that looked nothing like it. When the people were too discouraged to care about God's house, God still cared for them enough to send prophets to help them build a temple for the people's own good. The Lord is quite stern in his assertion. I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury. God is jealous of a true kind of jealousy, and here we see how that jealousy shapes God's relationship with Judah. On the one hand, God wants to be the only one receiving Judah's worship. Israel was not supposed to worship any other gods before the Lord their God is a jealous God. When they showed interest in other gods or started to follow the gods of the Gentiles, God's wrath was unleashed upon them, and they were severely punished. These punishments often took the form of foreign invasions by other nations that God used to chastise Israel. However, here we learn that God's jealousy compels him to return to his people and bring them hope for the future. So um, we see here two types of jealousy. The first jealousy is the type that we're familiar with as ourselves, where uh, no, nobody else can have this. This is mine. God is saying, I'm a jealous God. And that's why the people of Israel were punished as we went through um, previously about how they were invaded and all because they were disobedient. The type of jealousy that's being talked about in today's lesson is more when my husband read the scripture about a passion a passion for his people, his love. And now he's looked at how these other uh, countries and people have chastised his people and to the point really 
beyond what he really intended for them to be chastised. So he's like, no, that's enough now. I need to, I need to bring my, my people back to me. And so now he's, he has uh, what's called more of a passion, this type of jealousy that they're talking about in this lesson. Very good. Okay, so you want to, did you want to go on to the next? Okay, now that we got that, I, I, I didn't hear mention about this uh, second jealousy. I, I think that's with the husband and the wife, you know, and that's the kind of jealousy he had towards the church. You know, uh, these people are Israelites, in other words. So with that being said, we're going to go right on into the next outline because it's going to really just... First, do anybody have any questions or comments? Anybody have any comments about that? No? I wanted, I wanted to add something. One of the things that I missed in part of the background that I was given was that when Cyrus allowed the Jews to go back to Jerusalem, which is where Mount Zion was, one of the things that I missed was to say he also sent some other people. And you and, and um, Vicki mentioned it. He sent Zerubbabel to be like the leader, like, like Governor Pritzker. He sent him to be what's called the governor. And then he also sent another person who was called, I think his name was Joshua. And Joshua was the high priest. And that's where they also implemented the uh, ordinance of the high priest, having somebody over them. Um, that connects directly to God. And then he sent Haggai and he sent Zechariah. So I, I apologize for leaving that out. I was in such a haste. So. Bless you, bless you. Thank you, Lisa. So now it, you're going go to ahead. the second outline? Yeah, I'm going to the second outline. Oh, we're gonna go now to God will restore Judith. Amen. Amen. Will somebody read that outline for me? God does not just hi, it's Audrey. I worry. I'll read it. Thank you. You want the scripture or the outline? Or the I want the outline. Okay. Oh, you know what? We didn't even get into the scripture. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I, I it's your no, that, you're right. I want to get into that scripture. It's short. But somebody read the scripture for me. Okay. Okay, what scripture are you referring to? Three and four. And and now the Lord says, I am returning returning to Mount Zion and I will live in Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called the faithful city. The mountain of the Lord of heaven's armies will be called the holy mountain. This is what the Lord of heaven's army says. Once again, an old men and women will walk Jerusalem streets with their canes and will sit together. And I got my pictures right in front of this. We'll sit together in the city squares. Keep going. Amen. Amen. Oh, I, he's, I think he goes up to Go eight. Ahead. He goes up to yeah. eight. Goes okay, up to then. Eight. That's what I'm about to say. Does, does say, I just read what was because I was looking at my, my tablet. This says, the Lord of hosts, behold, <laughs> I will save my people from each country. Each country no, is no, from. Five. Look, where five. you at? Five. Five. Okay, well, dude, what am I doing? I'm, I read five and six, so that meant I had seven and eight, right? Okay. Three, three and four. I thought you read three and four. Yeah, three and four. Okay, well, that blast, where am I at then? Five and six then. <laughs> you know, it's five and four, five and four. No, he, he did that. Five no. and four being displayed now. God, and the streets and the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the street there have I read that already thus said the Lord of hosts if it be marvelous in the in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days should it all be also marvelous in my eyes said the Lord of hosts when we keep on going yeah seven and eight Thus said the Lord of hosts, behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Sorry for the misunderstanding. It's okay. 
Sister Archie. Oh, I went. Sister, you ready for Sister Archie? Audrey, who's with you? Are we at verse 11? I'm sorry. No, no. Uh, okay, it, we're back to number it, two. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. God will restore Judah. God does not just rescue Judah from captivity, both in the east and in the west. God's people will return to Jerusalem. They will rebuild the city and God will dwell in it again. The temple that lay in ruins at the time of the Babylonian captivity was to be rebuilt. The worship of Yahweh would take place in Jerusalem again. But with all of this, the Lord would restore the people of Jerusalem. There will be peace and economic growth again in the city, even though it seems desolate at the time of Zechariah, where there is now only death and destruction. God will bring life and hope. Joy and gladness will replace the sorrow and mourning that characterize life for the captives. There will be large families again in the city with grandparents and grandchildren in the city, with grandparents and grandchildren seen in the streets of the city without a care for their safety. The earth will yield her increase. This is a far-fetched dream of a future that seems unrealistic to the hearers, yet God is asking for the people's trust. How do you respond when God says something that that you says God says me. something to you that sounds impossible? Oh, that's, that's deep. Wow. That's real good. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's real good. Well, for one, I get real excited, okay? I can't wait to see exactly what he's gonna do. You know, and that's where I personally think that patience and trust comes in. You know, when um, it's, it's a couple of things in here that I've heard over the last couple of weeks in the lesson that just stick out like, you know, hey, it's, it's what we're going through. It's what we keep asking for. It's what we keep asking to see God do. And I, for one, I'm just really excited about seeing how he's going to perform this. So uh, it seems mm -hmm. impossible, but then again, I know that it's going to happen. Just how, I don't know. And, and when. Right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else want to have something? I have a comment. We Come on. can't even sit in the house for quarantine mm -hmm. for, a few, for a few months. Folks are antsy, want to get out. I just can't imagine. It says we're going to be able to walk the streets again safely and we sitting up here, we go outside, you just saw somebody body slam a woman who didn't wear a mask. You see people who don't wear a mask. To me, I can't wait for him to restore us because we so out of control now. We're out not, of control. Not, not as out of control as they're going to get. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is just really starting. This is just a tip of the iceberg. When we really look at this lesson, Think about what happened back then and how it happened. It's the same as what's happening right now. You know, we do have people out there that want to be disobeying to God, but we know this is the, this is not the end because He said when He's going to destroy this world, He's going to destroy it with fire. But this is just one of the plagues that He put on us to see where we're at as His people. And just like mm -hmm. she said in the lesson, it's about the trust that we have. We got to have trust that God is going to bring us through this. There's too many of us want to have trust, but we want to still do what we want to do. God ain't pleased with that. That's what he. That's why he made the families back in before uh, 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 Zacharias and them suffer. His ancestors and stuff suffered. That's why uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar he took he took on this story and and and, and just did it in. No one, you know what I'm saying, did it in. He just messed up the land. Now God said He wants His people back, and He's going to take His people back, and that everything going to be all right. Even though what they did wrong, he still loved them. So that's that true jealousy love. You know what I'm saying? It's like the husband to the wife, if I'm not going too far. It's like the husband to the wife, like the church is to God. So we have to remember that the whole thing about this lesson is about trust. When we trust and not be trying to trick each other, not be trying to, you know, uh, we get into the next. I'm um, getting into the next one. Yeah, you want to go ahead and get to it. 
Okay, let's let's get that on into the next one, y'all. So I can finish. But I, do anybody have any questions about that? Or not question, but comments. Okay. Yeah, next seven verses. Down to three. Somebody read Judith must return to God. I'll leave it as the third outline. Yeah, that's the last one. Okay. Yes. Okay. I got you. Someone I got you. That me? Well, I got you, Deacon. Thank you, sir. All right. Good morning. Um, happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. Thank you. Judah must return to God. God is eager to bless Israel as they reestablish themselves and redevote themselves to rebuilding the temple. He reminds Israel why they are in this state. God had to punish their ancestors for their sin, but now their punishment is complete. And he is pleased to bless his people again. However, the Israelites do have a part to play in their restoration. They must promise to obey the God who is blessing them. The Lord requires the Jews to avoid the negative policies that, pre that precipitated their fall into exile. They must reform their justice system so that the truth is told and peace is sought. Schemes and perjury have no place in a nation God is restoring to fellowship with him. Amen. Now look, I I I went a little too far. I was running, y'all, because of time, maybe in, in the sense of speaking. But I need somebody to read 13 through 17. I get it. Uh, and it shall come to pass as they ye were a curse among the heathens, O house of Judah, and the house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing, fear not. But let your hearts be strong, for thus said the Lord of hosts, as I thought to punish you, then your fathers provoked me to wrath, said the Lord of hosts, and I will re repent it not. I repent it not. So again have I thought in these days do, to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Fear ye not. These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And let, not, let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. And love no false oath, for all these are things that I hate, said the Lord. Amen. That's, that's kind of self-explanatory. Anybody got any comments there? I got a comment again. Today, we're talking about walking for a mind. And to me, this just stuck out so much in the lesson because it talks about how God hates lies. He says, swear by the truth. He says, your, your courts. On verse 16, he says, tell the truth to each other render verdicts in court they couldn't even tell the truth about man shoot being shot yeah. then they used the the system to pervert by saying that the guy who was trailing him who used to be a former sheriff it seemed so disjointed and unfair and so i just thought this was a perfect example of what's going on today and how it's impacting us how they even go to court put their hands on the Bible and they'll lie right before our face. So, yeah. Right. That was my comment. Yeah. Our lead, I, I agree to piggyback on that. I just want to go back to the aim for change in the statement about pray for God's presence to result in a communal sense of justice, prosperity, and unity. Because all too often, we've seen that happen in our community where we are constantly seeing injustices in the justice system as it's called, inequalities and inequities. So um, we as a people, and when I'm saying people, not just Christian black people, Christian black people, keep the trust because I am like Miss Audrey, I am excited to see this sense of this justice 
and unity and prosperity to come to us because we seem to be getting the short end of the stick and so much. And so I, I, I'm just looking forward to that because it's coming out, like I mentioned earlier in the early lesson, it's coming out in the forefront how things are in this country. And, you know, things can get better. So that was my comment. Let's go. Anybody else? Let's Anybody go. else? Uh, I have a comment. Go Isn't ahead. The last section that we just went over, Judah must return to God. Uh huh. The, the title says it all. The people must return to God in order to be restored. And I think that's probably the missing link. As people, we want to do our own thing, but we need to obey what the Lord has told us. That's how you're going to get back. Amen. And, and this, this is so true, you know, to all of every, everybody says something good. But this is what's got to happen before God mm -hmm. really come back for all of us. See, because the word has been spread out all over the world. So we need to face that, that everybody that heard the word, at least we hope everybody have heard. Have anybody mm -hmm. ever, well, I know Arlita told me that, uh, that she took a trip and went to Rome. And so did my wife. She went to Rome. You know, and I you know when I heard that and I thought about it, you know, it's, it's all the things that happened over there and the things that are happening now. Then with the seven mountains, uh, you know, where these people live, they live uh, far away from where they had to go build that. So when they were going to build, they had to go like from here, uh, from Chicago to Maywood or either Oak Park. You know, they went a far distance. And just imagine, they didn't have no cars back then. You know, this is probably all walking there. You know what I'm saying? So we have to be careful of how good God has been to us. Yes. He allowed you to have that car. He allowed you to have that house. You know, and you're not to forget about him that you exalt his name, that you, you know, you make it present that God is in the head of your life. You know, not lie to each other. You know, don't don't say I didn't come to church because you know I I just didn't feel good if you felt good. You you know what I'm saying. So this is what we have to do. We have to start being truthful with ourselves. And in order for us to change this world, we're gonna have to change ourselves. Anybody else? Oh. Yeah, I like the idea that toward the end of this um, passage, God gives us a glimpse of our responsibility to one another. When oh, he's talking, she is right here. I'll let you talk. Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah I that, hear you. that he's talking, uh, sharing with us that we do have a responsibility to one another. And when we go to the New Testament and Jesus comes, it's not only that we love him, but we need to love one another. Before, when he talks through the prophets, a lot of times it's just telling them of, their, of his disappointment that they're not loving him. Here he opens up and includes that we have a relationship with one another. And, I, and Ruben, we have to include that, like you said, when we are in terms of restoration, God has an expectation for us to love one another. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, I'd like to thank everybody for joining in on our uh, Sunday school this morning. I, I will turn this back over to the hands of Alita right now, and she Perfect would instruct time. us further. Perfect time, and it's 11.43. And people, I thank you. Everybody reminded me what time it was. It uh, works out perfectly. Uh, we got a couple of things. We got Next Sunday is Women's Day, and I know Bonnie is on, Did or she kept getting locked out and coming back. Bonnie, are you available to say something about Women's Day? All right, talk to you. She's not saying anything. Um, well, I know that uh, our pastor was planning something special for Women's Day. Okay. And the uh, assignment for women is 250. Men's oh, okay. uh, we didn't hear you say what the men's was. We heard one, uh, 150. Okay, all right. You heard that, man. Uh, um, additional announcements. Anybody else have something else? Regard, I know Father's Day is coming up soon. I'll come up with some things to um, prepare for Youth Day also. So we got a couple of weeks. I have the new Sunday school book. What I need you to do is send me, type your name in here, and we will come up with a way of either sending you the books electronically or 
I will, um, I think I can send them electronically, but we also can get you hard copies if it's so needed. So uh, inbox your name through the chat box here this morning, and I will try to take care and make those uh, preparations to get everybody a book. And one of the other things is uh, when Ed was reading, Ed this was reading from the King James Version, but the screen was showing the uh, live, New Living Testament. So uh, we'll try to clean that up uh, next time so that we're kind of consistent with what we're seeing. Um, and also, and also that we're coming up with uh, probably in the next week or so, we'll probably be uh, bringing back the marriage ministry meeting. We're going to do it through Zoom. Uh, so more information to come. So just okay. have that in the back of your mind to be looking for the information regarding the marriage ministry at Great Open Door through Zoom. And we're going to invite invite the, uh, our sister churches and stuff to be involved in that as well. Okay. But uh, we only get 100 Let me say something. You put People are putting their names, but you got to put your name and for the book because I, your names aren't showing up on what you're writing. So I kind of know some of the people. I don't know everybody. So can you make sure you put your name, like Sunday School Book, uh, Denise, <laughs> Denise Little, <laughs> or, or Carolyn Davis or something. So put the name and then uh, the book, and I'll know that because your names aren't showing up. They're showing up like they're showing up on the screen. Um, I'm sorry, finish yet, this. I apologize. <laughs> mm -hmm. Book. Well, can't you mute it? Okay. Um, great. Good God. Uh, my mic then came out now. Um, like I said, we look look forward to us uh, doing marriage ministry on uh, Zoom. So that's more information to come. Robert Jackson, would you like to say something? No, All right. Good that's about it. More information to come. I heard somebody else. Okay, so a, a lot of you are putting your names. We did not forget last Sunday was first Sunday. How many of you were married during the month of May? Anybody? I know June, a bunch of people were married. Nobody? How many people had birthdays in the month of May? I do. Who? This oh, Vicky. Vicky? Okay, Vicky, who else? No, Vicky, the only one? Oh, we one. get to sing. Huh? I had a birthday too. And May, May. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Ebony. Okay, well, we get to sing happy birthday to y'all because I forgot <laughs> last week. Let's see. One, two, three. Oh, wow. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Now we ain't gonna do the second part. Tiarita, <laughs> Tiarita, uh, yes. Can you remind those that have children, please have them connect to Junior Church today at one o'clock. The link is on the website as well as. Y'all please do because I've been coming every week and it's been the bomb. I'm mad because they won't let the adults <laughs> But the kids are enjoying themselves. If you got grandkids, you are missing out if you're not going to junior church. Um, what else? Anything else? Okay, I think that covers everything. Can you do our invitation? Amen. Amen. Can you put talk, that uh talking to Mike? That... All right, Alita, can you put the paper up? I know us, I know we usually do that so everybody can see what we're saying uh, about the doors of the church is open right now and you can come through on the watch care or by Christian experience or as a candidate for baptism. But here is your chance to come and give your heart to God everything to God and be blessed. Amen. So Amen. do we do we sing just as I am? No. I don't remember. No. But I would like to just sing a verse of that if everybody no. 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 Okay. Well, we, so we here's here's, here's your chance that you can come up under watch care 
by your Christian experience or as a candidate for baptism. Just insert your name in the box. Amen. And as, as, as they all insert your names into the box, I'm just glad that we had a great experience this morning and God has been good to us. I, I used to say the same thing about me going outside. I kind of getting claustrophobia, but I just go out there and work in the yard and just come on back in and go to the store when we have to get food. But uh, the Lord has been good to us. And all we have to do is stay focused on what the scientists are saying about this disease because it looked like a ghost. It seemed like a ghost. It is a ghost. So we need to keep our mind focused and stayed on Jesus and just ask him to lead us and guide us in the way that we should go. I Amen. Want, I love all of you guys. I want to make sure all of us thank Reuben. He was so nervous to do this, and it's not easy to get out here and talk. So I want everybody to let Reuben know we appreciate appreciated the work that he did in preparation and let him know we appreciate it. Great job, great job. Great job. Stepped up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, that will conclude for today. We will see you next Sunday, Women's Day. I got some uh, some more good stuff for you, so we'll see you. Thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day. Happy, Happy Mother's Day to all you guys. Day, everybody. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's see you Day. next Sunday. <laughs>